In hindsight, one might hypothesize that the EVE mission commander's terrible decision-making that led to the death of 8% of the surviving Kerbals had been down to the fact he had been a janitor before the asteroid hit Kerbin, and had never commanded any one or anything before in his life, other than his dog, to stop it defecating on the carpet. Exactly why a previous janitor had been put in charge was never made clear, and so Kerbal kinda turned their attention to more important things. Like what celestial body they would try to colonize next. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program Last Project. I think it's been a little while since I clarified this, but this isn't the last thing I will do on YouTube, you know. It's not like my last KSP project. The intention behind the title, The Last Project, is simply, ooh, drama. In a nutshell. So, welcome back to Ooh Drama, the series in which I will be uh, using only what we have in orbit in order to try and colonize every single celestial body in the Kerbal solar system. And in the first episode of this, we uh, put together a ship. In the second episode, we took that ship out to EVE, and we failed to really... I mean, nah, we didn't fail, did we? We colonized EVE. EVE is technically colonized. There are now four Kerbals alive on EVE somewhere, which counts as being colonized in my mind. We're just trying to place Kerbals in every celestial body, right? Yeah? So, we've done EVE. We might go back to it if we feel that we have chance, but for now, Eve is done, ticked off the list. Where are we going next? Well, what I've got here, as you may have noticed, I undocked two transfer engines, because I like to try and waste as many resources at once as possible, following the tradition started by that first episode. And I've got two of these transfer engines docked together. Now, you may be wondering, hmm, what is the purpose behind this? Are you going to construct two individual ships at the same time, try and save some Delta V maybe, going to similar locations? No, I'm actually going to have one ship, it's just going to be double barreled. It's going to have two fuselages, you know, two main bodies put together. Because the acceleration of these engines is so slow, even when I've got two of them on one transfer stage, that having two transfer stages together to give four of them is probably preferential for what I want to lift. And there's also another reason. And here we are having d docked and done our orbital maneuvers, and we're now transferring over to our landers as our first station. Our first aisle in the shopping market, yes, yes, I haven't forgotten that particular analogy. The other reason is that I don't want to have to waste so many landers when there's such a high chance that they'll all break, and that, you know, like 50% of them might die before they actually get to do anything, based on how well our survival rate has been so far, based on our track record. So, I'm going to cut down how many I'm dropping per minor body, like moons. And there we go, that's a good idea. How about we go to some moons? Now, what has a lot of moons? Hmm, Jewel! Jewel, the outer gas giant, the only gas giant. It has a lot of moons. And rather than sending a mission out for each moon, we'll just send out one mission to cover the three smallest moons. Val, Bop, and Paul. That's where we're going today, Val, Bop, and Paul. Well, I say that, that's actually not where we're going today. Today, we are going to do orbital stuff around Kerbin. As you may have noticed, the length of this particular video is quite short. It's, what, 16 minutes, 14 minutes, something of that degree. And this is because I had plenty of interesting footage to show you now, during this, what you are watching right now, that I felt made for an episode. That it was good enough to be an episode in its own right. But in the future, this will be summarized even quicker, this whole process, because it is quite repetitive, of course. Going around and doing the shopping may be fun the first time when you're a kid and your mum lets you push the trolley, but the, when you're an adult and you have to do it once a week, it gets kind of boring. So, yeah, we're not going to be doing this every week. We won't have one of these every other week, I suppose. As it may have been if I had not decided to summarize them quickly. But we will have this one today. And so, we did our... I missed that whole load of commentary there that I was supposed to do. We did our docking onto the uh, the landers, the landers and modules and stuff. And we picked up two stacks simply by attaching straight on to the bottom of the uh, of the stacks and just taking them two of way together because they were already docked together. Which made it really easy for us. And that means that we have six habitation modules. Each one can contain four 
so that's 24 kerbals. And we're going to 3 moons, so that's going to be 8 kerbals per moon. So rather than having 3 habitation modules like we landed on EVE, we're only having 2 habitation modules per moon. Because it doesn't make sense to waste so many assets on, you know, what is essentially just small moons around a rather big planet. Of course, Tylo and Lathe are more... more interesting. However, so the more interesting, so we're going to give them... Most likely, we're going to give them more habitation modules, depending on how things go. Anyway, now I've caught up with the commentary that was supposed to be done during I was, whilst I was rambling about orbital missions and whatnot. Uh, here we are at the unique modules. Quite a fitting match for our unique ship, because this is really, this is really quite unique, isn't it? You don't see many ships built like this. This is the, this is an artifact of orbital construction. But anyway, here we are on the, on the uh, unique modules, and we want this particular module that is docked onto the end of our unusual looking pair here. This one on the right hand side. This one? What? What? What accent is this? This one. This one. That's the one. The thing with the big two struts coming out of it, which is actually a solar collector intended for Val. I decided not to give a Bop or Pol any unique modules, because we didn't have time, so I've just given the Val one, uh, alongside Tylo and Lave, of course. And in fact, the Tylo one is what you can see is moving this, because this Val doesn't have any reaction control systems of its own, and so I've been using the Tylo unique modules. I said modules, there are two of them. There is the one clawed onto the side of the bigger one, the, you know, the two on the end of our ship now. And we'll be using them for a very interesting purpose that I won't reveal until that particular episode. So, all we need to know is that we have this big ship and we have some solar collectors now docked onto it. But we ought to have a problem. Because the transfer engines, when I removed them from the station right at the start of the video, I kept these things, these adapters, on the end of them. For some reason, and I don't entirely know why, because they made it extremely wobbly and extremely weak, especially when I'm carrying basically twice the payload. So, I want to get rid of these, but I don't want to just leave them drifting in space, I want to make sure that I get rid of them in a responsible manner, as a responsible and respected member of the... Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Huh? <coughs> Excuse me. Of the KSB community. Yeah. My cold hasn't entirely gone away. Anyway, here we are. So, we successfully undock two of our transfer engines, our two transfer engines, I should say, and we take them around to the other side, and now dock our adapters onto the Tylo modules, so that the Tylo module can then be tasked with dealing with them later, and docking them on somewhere onto the station, perhaps. And once the second one attaches, and it is now docked all together as one very asymmetrical ship, we can once again undock our transfer engines and send them back down to the depths of our ship. Like so. And luckily these things dock on pretty quickly. Having two docking ports working in parallel, or even three or even four docking ports working in parallel, makes it really easy to dock and it gives you quite strengthened connections. So if you've ever, if you've ever wondered why things are so wobbly or wanted to move more mass uh, in a configuration similar to what I'm using right now, you might want to try out doing multiple docking ports at the same time. It can be tricky because you've got to make sure that your orientation is lined up correctly. The construction specifics are quite, uh, quite important. But you can help by sitting down as I have, because I've got two stacks together, which by nature means that they are parallel, as they are docked at the same relative node points on either end of the stack. But anyway, it's kind of hard to describe exactly what I mean, so I'll just skip over that detail, and hopefully you caught a bit of that, if it interests you. So, we take our Tyler module, equipped with our extra four uh, adapter port things, and... I am just going to bring them in and dock on one and a half of the Tylo modules. Because the Tylo has the Tylo thing has two modules and they each have a purpose and they have claws and that should make it immediately obvious what they're intended for. But I'm not gonna tell you because I don't want to spoil it. So anyway, we can take one of a half and it was originally docked on in order to move this big heavier Tylo section. And 
as a result it can now dock back to where it was, and the claw thing can float gently out into space, and then be translated over to dock onto the side of the ring. The big ring which is intended for Moho, which we might well do in a few episodes time, who knows. And it can be reattached like that. Everything is sorted! Basically, the unique module station is just missing a middle part that we cut out of it, and the um, our new ship has gained a unique module and lost some unnecessary transfer engines. Or transfer, not engines, transfer adapters. There we go. And it's all rather pretty, isn't it? Look at that view. I do stop to admire, admire the view sometimes. Really. It is worth doing. But anyway, what's more important and what's certainly more worth doing is of greater value to our mission, is actually gaining some crew members to put inside our landers. Because we haven't got them, they don't come already equipped with land with uh, Kerbals. As you might imagine, their torch might already come equipped with batteries. It's much very the same kind of battery Kerbals sit in them there. So we can time more brand and we can once again admire the view of our ship before arriving after some intrinsic... Is, intrinsic is the wrong word, but it sounds sophisticated, so I'm going to use it after some intrinsic orbital ballet. What does intrinsic even mean? Intrinsic. Intrinsic? I'm going to Google it right now. I'm going to attend to, com to commentate whilst Googling. So yes, we are... Uh, we are docking things together. Intrinsic definition. And we have pulled up alongside, we pulled up our ship alongside our 100 Kerbal Station, or more accurately, our 92 Kerbal Station, seeing as 80% died. Actually, no, no, it's not 92, is it? It's, um, we took 12 Kerbals out. It's now the 88 Kerbal Station. We need to carry on counting down. Eight are dead, four are on Eve, 88 Kerbals remaining. Intrinsic definition, belonging naturally, essential. Intrinsic orbital, yeah, intrinsic orbital maneuvers make sense because it's essential. A definitely an example would be access to the arts is intrinsic to a high quality of life. Just how access to Hot Gaming's YouTube videos is intrinsic to having a happy life. So anyway, we can dock on our, our modules onto our 88 Kerbal Station. And we can use the new point twenty five feature to actually transfer Kerbals through, as opposed to getting them out into deep space and then making them use their own RCS packs to uh, to move over to that uh, to our module we have here. I am a bit bunged up, so forgive me for uh, blowing my nose halfway through a video. I'm really not very pro professional, am I? Googling things halfway through a video and blowing my nose and sneezing. Oh god, why the hell did you still watch me? But anyway, that's it. But that's pretty much the entirety of our video done. We have built our unique ship out of lots of unique different modules. We've filled it full of 24 Kerbals, which are going to be our victims, our crew members. Our crew members, yes for the coming few episodes, because we'll be in orbit around Joule, following the completion of this transfer burn that you are watching happen right now, at three times physics warp, no less. I haven't tried four times physics warp, I thought it might be a bit risky, so I've settled for three times, because this did take a long time. This one burn took about what, half an hour, maybe, even with physics warp. And we actually just flew past the Kerbal Station then, that was quite cool. So there we go, yes, that is our that is our thing done, that is our ship constructed, and now transferring out to Jewel, where we will have a couple, or maybe a few episodes worth, of moon landings. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you please did, please like. Don't forget, by the way, that these are streamed live whilst I record them, you can go to the link in the description to watch them if you have time. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.